Your life's one long holiday, flitting from paradise to paradise. To London to Manchester Air Shuttle. I thought you were going to get transferred from that run. It's only nine. Smashing. Oh. I don't often eat lunch. Well, you will for the next three days. Will I? If you want. I think I might get used to it. Just got to pop into head office for an hour later, and I'm free. This lunch, does it come with afters? Busy day. Quite the reverse. Things are very slow, Dave. I don't mind telling you. Shame. If something doesn't start happening soon, I'm going to have to dip into capital. Oh, tragic. No, oh, this recession is playing havoc with my cash flow. Point in. Do what? That'll be 150, Arthur. 150? Disastrous, isn't it? Oh, I am one for the barman for maybe putting a bit of business your way. Hey? Eh? Like a couple of geezer, they would have been asking after you. But don't quite, but don't quite, not straight away. Why? Or maybe you won't want to meet them or let them know who you are. Dave, what are you going on about? You just said you were going to put a bit of business my way. I said maybe. I mean, I don't look like the old Bill. But I certainly don't fit in with the sort of punters we usually get here. Can I look now? Maybe they're creditors. Creditors? A friendly word in your ear, that's all. They're sitting by the bandit. Say what they wanted with me? Can I recognize them then? No. I didn't say. They just wanted to know if you could be contacted here. And you said yes. Why not? Because if they are people I wish to avoid, for professional reasons, you understand, you've dropped me right in it, haven't you? Except if they were some people after you for less than friendly reasons. They wouldn't declare themselves. Almost certainly they know what you look like. And clearly they don't. Otherwise they'd be over here by now. May I have a point there, don't you? No. Introduce yourself. Well, there's no sign of him. Well, this is where they said. Um, I understand you uh, two gentlemen wish to contact a Mr. Arthur Daly. Are you Mr. Daly? Oh, well, now, uh, that depends. Depends? Either you're Mr. Daly or you're not Mr. Daly. And you are? Mr. Brown. And this is Mr. Smith. Smith and Brown. Common names, I'm afraid, but we're just country folk. We were looking for someone, and this man in the pub we were in gave us your name. Said you could be contacted here. Give it a rest, Charlie, will you? No sweat, Arthur. What, uh, what sort of person were you looking for? Someone who could perhaps help us. Oh, well, someone like me. Someone who could arrange a repossession, right? Repossession, eh? Car, is it? Um, not exactly, no. Uh, for a fee, of course. Oh, well, yes, 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 of course. I mean, that would naturally have to be negotiated dependent on the situation and the nature of the article to be repossessed in question. You sound like a lawyer, Mr. Daly. No, no, no. Just a businessman that likes things clear, Mr. Brown. Ah. Uh, we don't wish to haggle, Mr. Daly. The fee we had in mind was £4,000. £4,000. 500 in advance and the rest when the job's completed. Yes, yes, I, I think I might be able to help you. Let me get you both another drink and then we can discuss details. <laughs> no, I was just thinking. I know that. What a great deaf you've got. Yeah. Deaf and dumb. Bottom. <laughs> You're crude. No, but honest. Crude. But nice. Well, different. We can't all be flight captains. Thank goodness. <laughs> I'd better be getting along to head office. Hello, lover. Hmm. Oh, bad timing, eh? Well, well, um, Penny, this is Debbie. Just a friend. Just? What is this? Some sort of a wind-up? You're convincing, I'll give you that. Who stuck you into me? Was it Dave behind the ramp? You know, I know, I know, that pub you went into. Pig and Whistle, was it? Jerry Orley? He put you up to it. 
He's a god. <laughs> You're not joking, are you? Yeah, but you don't have to go just yet, do you? Well, I said was can I have a word with you alone. Don't worry, Debbie. I'm not leaving on your account. I've got to go into town for an hour or so anyway. Have a night, Terry. Yeah, but oh. hold on. Look, can you hang on a minute? Yeah, sure. You are coming back, aren't you? Well, not if you'd rather I didn't. Don't be silly. Oh, I thought maybe you got the... Terry, um... you're a free agent. Whoever you see when you don't see me is up to you. Yeah, but she's just an old friend, honestly. What does she do? Artistic poses. <laughs> we'll see you. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Sorry about that. About what? Lou was in the scene up with. Come fly with me. Oh, that's all right. It's just a friend. We're all just friends, aren't we, Terry? No, I am sorry, really. No, that's all right. I came round to see if you could help me tell. Oh. Well, there's this bloke who's been hassling me, you know. You want me to warn him off, right? Well, it's not what you think. He's threatened me. I'm one of the other girls at the club. What do you mean, threatened to hurt you? Yeah. He wants me, well, me and my friend, to go and work as hostesses at a club. But what he calls his club. <coughs> hostesses? Brasses. It's a clip joint for mug punters. And the gaff where you work isn't, eh? Might be a stripper, Terry, but I'm not a whore. So, this geezer has threatened you with physical damage if you and your mate don't oblige him and go on the game, eh? Right. Well, it's strictly illegal, isn't it? Call in the old bill. Get him nicked. Oh, come on, Terry. You know what it's like on that scene, the sort of people involved. If I call in the old bill, I wouldn't last two minutes. I don't like grasses. Yeah. Well, I don't like ponces. Can you help me, then? Has he got a name? Don't know it. Or what name the clip joint is. How many times he fronted you? A couple, when I've been leaving the club. Alone? Yeah, my friend works later than me, usually. And has he claimed her separately? Yep. Well, surely the bloke who runs your club's got friends who would protect his interests. Oh, that little twerp. Do you think he wants any aggravation? It's not hard to come by and have a couple of strippers these days, Terry. So how am I supposed to have a chat with him? Well, I thought if you could be about for a few days when I leave the club, then if he shows... What well, time do you leave? Monday two in afternoons at the moment. Around six. I've been too bleeding scared to do the late-night stint. Too dark and quiet at three in the morning. I could pay you, and my girlfriend could chip no, in a Don't be daft, don't be daft. <laughs> what are friends for, eh? Live here, Terry. You sleep here. You do. Oh, what's she doing here? Deb is my tea lady. <laughs> now I'm going to be doing a bit of work for her. Oh yeah. Mm. Hello, Arthur. Hello. Do I know you? Cool. We met round here once before when Terry was mini cabin. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't quite as warmly dressed then, though. You know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, look, I've got a very lucrative job of work for you, my son, and uh, I don't wish to discuss it in front of a third party, so could you... Uh... But Deb is a guest in my humble abode. She'll leave when she wants. All right, all right. You don't want to earn 300 salts for a few hours' work? That's all right by me. It's all right, Tell. I've got to be going to work anyway. You got transport? Well, no. Well, Arthur will give you a lift. Ah, then we um... can discuss whatever in the motor, can't we? I'll get me jacket. Help the lady on with her coat. All right. Yeah. Thanks again, then, Terry. Bye. See you later. All right, then. Who have I got to kill for 300 quid? No, no, no. It's nothing like that, Terry. It's a simple repossession job. Oh, I've told you before, Arthur. I hate repossession. Especially if it's some poor working pet's motor. No, no, look. Let's go to the Winchester and have a chat over a drink. Now, it's not a car that we have got to repossess. What is it, then? A bull. 
A what? A ball. Oh. Terry, a ball is just another bit of property. A ball is a live animal, a very big live animal. I have been assured this is a totally domesticated beast. You're having a laugh, aren't you? No, no, no. Someone's been winding you up. <laughs> a ball. Look, what if I were to put ball. 100 in your hand in Reddy's? Up front, right now. All right. No, no, not here, not here. No, no, here, now. Now. All right, all right. Here, put it away. I don't believe this. Well, don't you want to know where, when? Oh, sorry. I was so excited about forming a relationship with a bull, I forgot all about that. Where? When? Tomorrow. The country. <laughs> all right, then. Get me well he's out. And me cape and sword. Oh, I think suitable rust. That was the exotic and erotic Debbie, gents. Let's have a big hand for the girl with the big assets. So when's the honeymoon, Maggie? Oh, my honeymoon. <laughs> I thought you really liked the guy. Yeah. She was really into uh, him, Debbie. Oh, yeah, come what? on in, Terry. I thought you was waiting outside. No, I will be. I'll be in the wimpy part, all right? Oh. I just came in to say, if you see me, don't show out at all. I'll tag along behind you when you leave, and if he shows, I'll join you, OK? Right, OK. Right. Oh, Terry, this is Maggie. And this is Bella, the other girl I was telling you about. This uh, is Terry, mate. Hello, Terry. You all right, love? Debbie tells me you're going to be our white knight in shining armour. <laughs> yeah, I've done about the armour. <laughs> I saw the bastard in the audience again last night. That's the second time. Sat right in front, staring right at me. Oh, significantly. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you about that bit. I think you've seen too many old Hollywood gangster movies. Yeah, don't mean to say he ain't serious, though, does it? My sentiments? Exactly. Uh. I'll see you, all right? Yeah, all right, Tim. See you. Anyone? No, he put me right outside the club the other two times. Sorry for wasting your time, Till. No, no, silly. Oh, come on. I'll see you home, all right? No, that's all right. Don't be dark. There you go, love. All right. Oh, aren't you coming in for a bit, Till? Do you want to rephrase that? No, not really. Well, no. <laughs> no, it's a nice thought, but uh, no, I'm a bit busy. Yeah, I get it. No, straight. I've got things to do. It's all right, Till. No sweat. See you tomorrow, then, will I? Down the club? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again, then, Till. Yeah. You know, they're only glorified waitresses. They're not that much different to us. Still, stripping's <sighs> an art form that goes back a long way. Yeah, really? It's all a bit sad, really. What, Debbie's stripping or me helping her out? Stripping. Though it is a constant source of curiosity to me why you choose to earn your living as you do. I thought you only liked me because I was a nice bit of rough trade. Yeah, you don't. start that again. Oh, you meet a lot of interesting people. But it's so unpredictable. <laughs> like your arrivals and departures. Ah, oh, well, it's the only thing I can do. It's not too late for you to train for something. Leave it out. No, most of the time I like it. Does that include repossessing bulls? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Arthur can be a right loon at times. Wow, 
Thought you'd like it. You know the trouble with you, Terry? You've got no sense of style. That's what holds you back, my boy. No sense of image, Terry, image. Oh, for that gear is ridiculous. Don't show your ignorance. What do you know about rural oak culture? <laughs> you never set foot outside southwest London. We're going to collect a bull, not grouse shooting. Yeah, these clients are gentlemen farmers, aren't they? I've got to look the part, haven't I? Image, Terry, image. Well, left or right? Left. No, right. No, you're right, left. Oh, my God. Oh, this is a life, Terry. Day in the country, eh? Look at them fields, look at them hedgerows. England, my England! Look at them trees. British oaks. That's home. Yeah. You don't get none of your cosmopolitan hoi polloi down here. This is where your real Englishman lives. Don't talk cobblers, Arthur. Oh, smell that air. Clean. Unpolluted. It's funny, we should have found it by now. Found what? Well, he said there'd be a clearing, a lorry. We probably copped a wrong one back at that junction. Yeah, I think you're right. Hold on, stop it. I'll give you a push. Oh, blimey. Go on, Ed. Uh, no, 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 no. You get out and shove it, I'll get it out. Come on. Hey, it's a bit muddy, isn't it? Well, you're dressed for the country, aren't you? You could put your wellies on like me, shouldn't you? <laughs> image, Arthur. Image. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Remember the country code? Sod the country code. Arthur, you don't want to go round littering all this lovely rustic charm, do you? <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking. Is this business kosher? Why do you say that? It's just I've never heard of bulls being bought on a tally before. And if they were, it'd be a finance firm, wouldn't it? And they'd be responsible for the repossessing, not a couple of farmers. They do things differently in the country, Terry, and they are gentlemen farmers. They don't schlep around the marketplace slapping hands to do deals and handing over the reddies. Hold up, this looks like it. Sir, isn't it? Are we meeting? Little Red Riding Hood? No, the three bears. Now shut up. Ah. What's that? This tells you where to locate the animal, Terry. Here, yeah, see. Bull? We, Arthur. Where we locate the animal. Funny place to meet, isn't it? Where are they? No, 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 no. I'm not meeting them here. Eh? No, look, stop worrying, Terry. Just leave all the administrative details to me, eh? This is taking on a distinctly dodgy quality. Dodgy? Now, don't be silly, Terry. Look, I told you, they do things differently in the sticks. Yeah, well, it don't seem right to me. Look, it's all a matter of discretion. I mean, these, these gentlemen have to live in a community. They have to move among the peasants. It would not do for them to be seen connected with a delicate business like this. Oh, yeah. Well, don't just stand there. Off you go. Keys are in the lorry. Ah, ah. But you ain't. I think it's the next on the right. Here, let me have a look. Oh, no. Oh, this is ridiculous. It's got to be around here somewhere. <laughs> right, 
right. It's all yours, Terry. No, Arthur. <laughs> this country air is playing me up, Terry. I'm not, I'm not feeling all that. I am not going to do it alone. Come back a bit more. What for? What I want to get there, just in case I have to get out on the hurry up, but not big enough for the ball. <sighs> no, it's just a precaution. Yeah, I know. Look. Oh, you got it. Yeah, got it. You got it. No. It's a bit big, isn't it? Now strain, he said. Like the dog. Like the pet. No, no, but it's just because he might get nervous. Yeah, well, that'll make three of us. Oh, 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 Spanish, isn't it? I don't know. Go on. Toro, Ferdy. Hello, mate. Hello. Arthur! <laughs> oh, that... <laughs> supposed to be lucky, isn't it? Hello, mate. Bit of breakfast? Hello. You're a big boy, ain't you? Yeah. Who's a pretty ball, then? Oh, I say. Hello. Who's a pretty bully? You're not a bully, really, are you? Come here, let's have a push out there, Jordan. Hold on. Come here. Come here. Push this. Push this. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Calm down. Here's a good one. Oh, it comes in. Take it easy. Come here. Here's a good boy. Look, that's all right, isn't it? Gets a bit up your nose, but that's all oh, right. Good call. Come on, son. Look, look at that. It's everywhere. You wouldn't be giving me any bullshit, would you? <laughs> come on, son, babe. Look at that. Come on, come, come on. Well, give us a hand, then. Oh. No, I can't. I'm damaged. He's a nice old boy, aren't you? Go, go for a nice ride. Come on. Come on, it's a nice old bus. Come on. Look, Arthur, could you help? Come on. There's a good boy. Come on. Up you come. Come on. Look at that. It's easy, isn't it? Whoops, a daisy. Come on. Here's a good old bully. Here's a good boy. There you are. See, I told you. It's simple. Oh, yeah. Pretty simple, that one. Stay there, Phil. Yeah, he's a good old boy. What are you doing? Move it. Mine goes first. Go on, quick, quick, quick. Get up, get up. Simple. God, you done half pen and ink. Hold on. What do you mean, meet you in a village? What village? Little village about two miles down the road. I'll get a lift back there. But first, I've got to deliver our four footed friend to the clients. No, I'll follow you down. No, no. No, 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 Terry. Now, you've done your part. Now, I'll just go and do mine. If you'll pardon the expression, Arthur, this is all beginning to smell. Terry, would I do anything that's contrary to the letter of the law? Of course not. Unthinkable. Which is why it's all right for me to follow you down in the motor. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. Do you want to bet?
Mr. Smith, Mr. Brown, your property, as arranged. Who's that in the car, then? Oh, that's, uh, that's just my trusted labourer. No uh, problem, was there, Mr. Daly? Yeah, I see what you mean. <laughs> Tripped, did you? Slithered, more like. That's <laughs> uh, all right, Mr. Daly. We farmers are used to that smell. Uh, well, perhaps you'd like to view your property before we conclude our business? Yes, perhaps we'd better have a look. Well, that all seems satisfactory, Mr. Daly. I think you'll find that's in order. Well, it's been a pleasure doing business with you, gentlemen. And ours with you, Mr. Daly. Uh, there is just one thing. You uh, don't happen to have an old newspaper in the car, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Good day's work, Terry. Good day's work. Was that their farm? No, no, no. That was just a meeting place. Why didn't we take you round to their farm? Well, employees, farm labourers. When they see us, the word gets down the rural grapevine, doesn't it? It's very hard to keep a secret in the sticks, you know. What secret? Once the geezer who had the ball finds out it's on the missing list, he's going to know, is it? Well, Terry, even I can't claim to know all the law of the countryside. That's the way they wanted it, that's the way they got it. Now stop rabbiting on about it and cop that. Take the two you've got coming out of that and be grateful. I could have done it on my own, you know. Straight down the middle? Of course straight down the middle. Would I do it any other way? Honest half us? No, of course not. Cool, you know, stink. Well, don't knock it. Where there's muck, there's money. That's what they say up north. Yeah, well, I want to be up west by six to put your clock down. Silly. I've got a mate with a stall. Bit of a mess, aren't I? Well, the sister said it's nothing permanent. You'll be out in about a week. Yeah, she said. Trouble is, who's going to feed my cats? Listen, I'm sorry I didn't get back to the club. I was stuck in the sticks with Arthur. Traffic. It's all right. I know you would have if you could. Listen, did he say anything? No. Just a lot of dirty verbal. Then he beat up on me. Did he have a motor? Don't know. Didn't see. I'll ask Bella to pop in and feed my cats while I'm in here, Terry. Yeah, of course I will. Well, can she get in? My bag's down there, keys in it. That's it, yeah. Thanks, Tell. Here, how's that girlfriend of yours? Penny. Still on the ground, is she? What do you mean? It's nothing to do with you. I don't want any trouble. Listen, pig's breath, they're your girls. They work for you. They're entitled. I pay them, don't I? Am I responsible for what happens to them if they leave the club? Look, are you sure you don't know this rat bag, Ponce? I swear, if I knew anything I'd tell you, believe me, do us all a favour. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. You're right about the girls. I should do something. You find him, saw him out, there's a pony in it for you. A pony, you slag? No, I'll tell you what you'll do. You'll make that 200 whether I find a bastard or not. Got it? 
got it? All right, all right. It's fair enough, I suppose. But one thing you don't tell no one is down to me. I've got to conduct a business around here. Listen, you've got my number. If you see that crowd at all, you give me a ring, right? And that goes for you as well. Sure. Any time you was getting undressed. I detest punces. You haven't got a thing for it, have you? No, that's not the point, is it? Maybe if you led a different lifestyle... Oh, here we go. All right, problem. I know, I know. Turn out the light, love. What for? I'm shy. <laughs> What time is it? Time you're up. How do you feel? Terrific. We're not going to for long. Oh, my God. Congratulations. You've now graduated to wrestling. I feel champion of its breed, a royal show. They reckon it's worth more than 40 grand. I should have asked for more. More? Terry, I have been conned. I've been conned, you mean? Dave, tell him, am I upset or am I not upset? He's upset, Terry. Upset? We could get burned for this. Explain that to him. Oh, I think it's still on a statute book the rustlers can be up. Don't say things like that, Dave. I'm upset enough as it is. Diabolical liberties have been taken with my trust in nature. Upset? I, don't, I must be around a bleeding twist for standing by this. Terry, Terry, I know just how you feel. Let it be a lesson to us all. Never trust any but your own. But you knew about it, didn't you? That's what all the ducking and diving was about. I swear. Terry, I am as shocked and upset as you are. The only thing we can do is keep our fingers crossed. Fingers crossed? What are you talking about? We don't get our collars felt. Look, we could be nicked. Oh, look, I have been discussing it with Davia. Isn't that right, Dave? That's right, Arthur. And we reckon we're in with plenty of chance. Off? Oh, as long as we keep stun, just the three of us, you know? I mean, the local old Bill are not going to come looking here for rustlers, are they? In the middle of London, with our sort of social background. No, I've got a better idea. We get it back and return it. Return it? The ball? That's right, we back it. Don't be silly. How can we do that? It's simple. We drive down to the country, we find your two gentlemen farmers, we collect it and put it back in the field. And what if someone sees us? The old place will be seething with village bobbies bent on promotion. Be like a great train robbery to them. No, 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 no. Out of question, Terry. <laughs> Next thing you know, you want us to give the money back. All right, then we'll go to the old bill. We'll declare everything we know, right? We'll explain to them we're victims of a con. You can't be serious. You think the filth is going to take your word against that of two English country gentlemen? You with your form? You're right, Terry. Well, you'll be eating porridge before you know it. All right, then, we do it the other way. Terry. At least, then, if we get nicked, we've got a convincing story. All right, look, supposing you're right, how do we find them? Knock on the farmhouse doors and hope somebody answers. They probably don't even live on that manor. He's right, Terry. Will you stop keep saying he's right? Now, now listen, look, I think I can remember the number of the roller, right? Now, you've got a mate who straightened on the false, right? Yeah. Well, he could check it out, get a few addresses for us, yeah? I suppose so. Well, go on, in on the dog. Okay. This is not a good idea, Terry. And we're giving that money back. What? You going potty or something? This way, we don't get involved with a conspiracy charge if it comes on top. I can't do that. I can, and I can't afford it, so you certainly can. Look, Terry, the aggravation alone isn't worth what you've got out of it. I'm not going back to Nick for a poxy 300 quid. Look, Terry, be reasonable. I mean, 
even if we get the ball back without any difficulties, them yikes are not going to start screaming for their money and putting themselves on offer, are they? I don't care. I'm not taking any chances with my liberty. But what do you think we're doing now? And what about all that clobber I bought? That's got to be paid for, you know? That is your genuine out-of-pocket expenses, Terry. As you said yourself, Arthur, let this be a lesson to us all. Oh, my God, look at this. Nothing but fields, open spaces. Exposure is terrible. That's funny. Yesterday, it was England, my England. Funny it's not, Terry. We're a dot on the card to be spotted, I'm telling you. Me and me city pinstripe with a wild animal in possession. Suddenly, it's a wild animal, is it? Who can tell? Snatched from the security of the field, it knows us home. Thing like that could unbalance his brain, turn it into a raging wild beast. Look, let's turn back while we still got the chance. No! Listen! Look, helicopter! They're probably scarring the whole area. We're a million to get that. Turn it in, will you? They've all got estates down here, you know. Who have? Crown Court Beaks. Descendants of Judge Jeffries. Judge who? Jeffries. Known as a hanging judge. That sort of excessive attitude to lawbreakers is passed on from generation to generation. That lot think a plea of mitigation is a request to go to the toilet. It'll be the maximum sentence. No mercy. Stand on me. I will if you don't turn it in. Oh, my good God. It's on top. I know it. It's on top. Arthur, we're still in your car. We haven't even got the ball yet. Come on, he's waving you on. Is he following? On a push bike. Don't let that fool you. He could radio ahead, put out on all points. All that politeness is just to lull you into a false sense of security. It's the first copper we've seen for miles. Don't let that fool you. They're all around, lurking in the hedgerows, hiding in the hay. Do-da, do-da. Just drive. take the ball back. Yeah, uh, misunderstanding. You made a deal, Mr. Daly. Yeah, but as I say, there's uh, been a bit of a misunderstanding. You see, we didn't realise... We didn't know we were stealing the ball. Well, that wasn't our impression, Mr. Daly. Oh? Wasn't it? Now, which one of you two gentlemen owns this? I do. So you're William Meadows, then, eh? Now, you're probably wondering how we found you. You see, my friend Arthur has a friend who's got a friend in the force, see? The police? You haven't informed the police, have you? No, he hasn't, no. Not yet. What do you mean? Well, the way I see it, there are several ways to handle this. Now, the best way is that you give us back the ball and there's no aggravation. Or we call the old bill and let them sort it out. There is another way, though. Slightly unpleasant, I'm afraid. See, I get this. Then I start smashing up the roller. And then when I've worked up enough aggression, I'll sort you two out. Now, what do you want? Well, I don't think that'd be advisable. You don't, eh? A lot of big lads about the place. We've only got to call them. Well, you'd better start shouting, sunshine. Uh, well, wait a minute. What about the money? That's better. Here you go. Here's my share. A uh, bit of a problem there, Terry. I haven't brought mine. You didn't give me time to nip back and get it. Mr. Daly, you pay by check. No, no, no. I haven't brought my book. You've what? This. Oh, I could have sworn I left it on the... Um... Just pay the man, eh? All of it? Yeah, all of it. What about money for exes? Agro money? Just write out a check, right? You're off. Here's half my half, 600 quid, OK? 600? Here, we gave you 4,000 pounds. I, I was keeping it as a surprise for you. Next week, your birthday. I'll take an oath, Terry. You don't know when my birthday is? Y yes, I do. Yes, I do. Your mum told me when I, um, I went round one day. Just write a check. How, how do we know this won't bounce and you, you've taken the ball for yourselves? You don't. Thank you. Where is it, then? Better get loaded up, then. You know, if there's no ball on the premises, there's no evidence. So what's to stop us ringing the police once you've gone? Oh, that's simple. You're coming with us. 
I thought you London spivs didn't mind what you did for a few pounds. Spivs? Bit out of date, aren't you? I suppose we could make it a, a bit more. I suppose you could try. Say, uh, 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 another thousand? Not interested, Squire. Anyway, you couldn't have kept it around here, could you? Somebody be bound to spot it. We've no intention of keeping it around here. My colleague has an isolated farm a long way away. It wouldn't have been difficult. And I thought all the clever villains lived in London. Go on, then. He ain't going to come out by himself, is he? Doing this, people are beginning to talk. Her mm. indoors will kill you. <laughs> Terry! Terry! He's full of a case here, Arthur, isn't he? No, nah, he's all right. Just a case of being carried away. <laughs> Why did you let him get you into these situations? Well, I keep asking myself that. He's just got this way of talking me into things. Mind you, they're not all as loony as that ball caper. And it does keep me off the dole. How about calling me Cam? All right, you're a cab. <laughs> Listen, I don't suppose... What? No, nah, I don't know. Go on, what? Well, I was just wondering. Wondering what, for goodness sake? Well, having you here for the last few days, uh, well, I just thought, well, it'd be easier if... Uh... I like things the way they are, Terry. I like my job, my independence. And I like you. Just not ready for that kind of commitment. Not yet. Okay? Yeah, just a thought. Very nice one, too. Mary! Mary! Oh, my God. Mary! All right, all right, I'm here. So, what is it with you these days? You're becoming a recluse or Hi something? Hello, Arthur. Oh. It's all right. I was just leaving. Yeah, I've got a job for you. A mate of mine's opening a drinker over the water tonight. Thinks it might get a bit rowdy. There's a pony in it for you. Yeah, Keep well. you off the door. This is true. Oh, your cab. <laughs> Hello, they're ringing you. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, don't worry. No, it's all right. I'll be straight over. OK, ta-da. Hmm. Listen, you're in a hurry. I need a lift. Why, where? It's that other business I was talking to you about. What other business? I'll explain in a moment, all right? Oh. Ah, your cab. It's OK, I'll do it. You go on. I'll ring you next week. I'll see you then, eh? You'll see me. Come on, I'll see you. Just keep your seats, gents. The show will continue shortly. 
He's ready to leave. Permanently. I said I didn't want no trouble in the club. There ain't gonna be any more trouble now. Just give us the 200. Come on. I'll handle the finances, Terry. Straight down the middle, as always, right? No. Wrong, Arthur. This is for Debbie. What you might call compensation money for industrial injury. You met Mr. Creasy. Terry? Terry, you know, there are times when I just don't understand you. And there are times, Arthur, when I do understand you.